this discussion about you know what the president is doing I think uh, I think first each and every American needs to be engaged in this discussion uh, and certainly those of us who serve at the federal level need to be actively engaged we have a proper role uh, of oversight um, it's uh, clearly defined in our Constitution and so I can do nothing other than engage in this discussion with my colleagues it's appropriate Lois Newport Ritchie Florida on our Republican line Congressman Scott Ridgell is our guest yes hello and thank you I'm enjoying what uh, governor is saying today um, I have a degree in theology and I wanted to bring a spiritual view across uh, Nebuchadnezzar was a king in the Neo-Babylonian Empire in 605 to 562 BC he took the Jews from Jerusalem as a safe net and he overcame many of the tribes of, of, uh, around him to get where he got just at the point of having um, accomplished what God sent him out to do he looked over into the valley and he said no four tribes have reemerged and are coming towards me so, um, Lois, if you could tie that into uh, Afghanistan very quickly. Well, God said to him, it's over. This will go on forever. Praise and call the piano player up and worship. And um, they went down into the valley, didn't find him. Hey, and they you know what, Lois? Uh, we're going to have to move on unless you tie this into Afghanistan. All right. Well, I'm saying in a spiritual sense, we need to take care of our homes right now first. All There's right. a time for war. Got the I, point, Lois. Lois, thank, thank you. you very much. Um, I, I do believe, um, to the extent that I'll touch on the, uh, the, the, the spiritual side here, I do believe that evil exists. And I think that uh, those who attack innocent civilians, as was done uh, on 9-11, and those who um, elevate that, I believe that is uh, pure, pure evil. And uh, sadly, unfortunately, the madrasas across the world, those schools where uh, young men in, in, in particular, I think are truly brainwashed and uh, they are, are taught to, to value death more than life. And there are more than 50 madrasas in Islamabad alone. And they are across uh, Pakistan uh, and of course some in, uh, in Afghanistan as well. And of course among the madrasas there are degrees of, of extremism but uh, there are enough to where they are literally generating um, a generation of young men who, who don't share our values. In fact, it's the antithesis of our values. And then uh, it, they end up in that, uh, um, you know, the tribal areas of Kastan. And that's essentially the wellspring from which new Taliban uh, fighters are generated. And then they go across a porous border and they again uh, uh, attempt to, to engage American troops and, and disrupt the government in uh, Kabul. Our guest is Scott Ridgell, first termer from uh, Virginia Beach, Virginia. Served in the Marine Corps Reserve from 1978 to 1984 and got his MBA at Regent University. Yes. New York City, Matt, Democrat. Give us these, Ben. Um, you know, once we um, do finally pull out of, of Afghanistan in the next few years, and then the Taliban do um, uh, become stronger and uh, run the country, they're of no threat to the United States. Al-Qaeda will not resurge in uh, Afghanistan. Your uh, guest said that we're showing our hand to the enemy by uh, talking about the uh, troops uh, uh, withdrawing. But we have no enemy in Afghanistan. We're in the middle of a civil war. And we're on 9-11, we were, I'm in New York City, and I was here on 9-11, and I know what it felt like. We were attacked by a few sophisticated al-Qaeda Saudis on 9-11, and the fact that those buildings came down like they did, they were lucky. Osama bin Laden, never in his wildest dreams did he think that those towers would pancake that the way that they did, and this government and George Bush overreacted to it was a tragedy and i was here and i'll never get over it and i know people who died that day but bin laden is smiling on the bottom of the ocean as we go bankrupt fighting these wars and your guest is misguided but thank you for c-span matt thank you thank you for the call and um you know i uh, i've uh, we may not be as uh, so far apart as as you might think um i have uh, said to my colleagues you know what if we woke up tomorrow 
uh, to learn that uh, an American had experienced a, a horrific attack that was planned and executed by Al Qaeda in Yemen. Would that mean then that we should uh, invade the country of Yemen and occupy the entire and try to control uh, every linear uh, foot of its borders? And uh, I, I believe the answer to that is no. But we would seek out and bring justice to those who uh, planned and executed the attack. So I believe that uh, President Bush was correct and it was uh, morally right. In fact, we could do nothing other than that, in my view, than to uh, bring to justice those who planned and executed the attack on 9-11. And I'm uh, sorry for the loss of your friends and, and what you experienced. Next call for Congressman Rigel comes from an Afghan war vet in Kansas City, Missouri. Hi, Bobby. Hey, how you doing there? Good. What was your, where did you serve in Afghanistan? When? And then go ahead and make your point. Bobby? Oh, we just lost him. We're going to move on to Caribou, Maine, Jim, on our Republican line. We're talking about the president's plan for Afghanistan. Please go ahead. Good morning, Good morning gentlemen. Hi. Good morning. Uh, while I'm glad to, to hear that we'll have 33,000 troops coming out of there, I think is, is a plus. Uh, my concern is, is that we know from history that wherever we go overseas, we never really leave. Um, when we finally get out of Iraq, we'll, you know, we'll always have a presence there. I was in the fir first Gulf War. You know, we still have a presence in Saudi Arabia. You know, when we draw down in Afghanistan, we're still, we're not going to take out our troops totally. Uh, you know, we... We, we are an empire, and that's where we go. You know, we have troops all around the world. And, Congressman, I want to ask you a question. Do you think are we ever fully have our troops totally out of Afghanistan, not just combat troops? I mean our entire presence out of that region. Not just in 2014. I mean, like, 2020, 2025. And I'd like to hear your answer. Thank you. Jim, thank you. Um, I, we are going to have some presence. I, I hope that it's the type of presence that I described earlier in the program, and we will have a presence there, I believe, for some time to come. Um, and I, I want to thank Bobby, the previous caller. I'm sorry I didn't get to answer his, uh, his question or even hear his question, but uh, Bobby, thank you for your service uh, from one American to another. I appreciate that. And uh, Jim, I, I think the, the point you make is, um, is a good one. You know, as I mentioned, the entire national budget of Afghanistan is around $1.5 billion. Now, the Army that uh, we are training and the police force that we are training with some degree of success because of the extraordinary effort and capability of our men and women in uniform is uh, going to, uh, uh, the annual budget for that is going to be around $8 billion. And I think that's, any government estimate I've seen on expenses is always too low. So I think you could, you could easily um, round that up to, to, 10, to $10 billion. So what, what are we creating here? Um, we are, uh, Afghanistan, under the current model, will be permanently tethered to the United States. Um, you know, and what's happening there is that uh, other countries are coming in, including China, and they're going to um, exploit and, well, maybe not exploit, but they are going to reap the benefits from the, the heavy lift that, that we've done. And uh, much of that is because uh, of, of all the restrictions, the trade restrictions, our inability to, to be as competitive as we need to on the jobs front. But that's, uh, that's a different topic. Maybe Peter will have me back on and talk about jobs one day. Congressman Ridgell, I want to read you part of uh, John McCain's statement following the president's address tonight. Get your response to this. Though I disagree with the president's withdrawal plan, I nonetheless believe that America's interests in Afghanistan are far too important for us to give up the fight and walk away, as many in Congress and elsewhere now advocate. I know that Americans are war-weary and fed up with our unsustainable national debt, but what our country can least afford is the cost of failure in Afghanistan. It remains a vital national interest for the U.S. to succeed. I, I, I can't comment on, a, on, on a something that uh, Senator McCain said in the context of of uh, foreign policy and a war without first d just sharing my profound respect for the senator and his service to our country. Um, now, I, I do hold a different view than the senator, and uh, I've made you know, my, my position clear on that. Um, and, and I would go